Hi guys, welcome back to Finding Your Indie. I'm Bonnie Paulson and Mandy Stevens isn't with us today. She's not feeling very well. I'm gonna go ahead and start on this brand spotlight that we have. We've had this author waiting for a while and I didn't wanna make her wait any longer. So we have this up and I'm super excited to get started. I have not looked at this author page. I put it into my Amazon search, found the author and I put it up and then I came immediately to do the recording. So, so you're going to be getting my first impressions and our author's name is Celia Roman. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And I will be giving her action steps. If I see anything that needs to be adjusted or make suggestions, or maybe I'll just say it's perfect or maybe I'll say it needs to go in the garbage. I'm just kidding. I'm not that kind of person. <laughs> I am kind of blunt, but I would never say that. So that's what we're doing. Today is a brand spotlight that we're talking about. And we're really just kind of talking about what's right, what's wrong, things that we see that might need to be changed, things that we might suggest. Uh, we do come from an ads and marketing background. We are marketing strategists. So anything that I do recommend, it will be because I'm thinking about the end game about marketing. So with that, let's get into it. Okay, as you can see here, I'm in my Amazon page. I'm sure my cart's gonna show, gonna pop open and show you everything I've got. Let's just ignore that. Okay, so what we're looking at is Celia Roman. First of all, I love the spelling of her name. And um, I'm not gonna actually read the, the, bo the bio right now. I'm not reading it, not reading it. <laughs> but I'm just gonna keep going down because I want her covers to tell me what her brand is. And I'm gonna actually make comments as I'm going through. I do love the colors. I think it looks like it's actually pretty similar to what it needs to be. If I'm guessing correctly, it looks like YA paranormal. It could be urban fantasy romance. Um, but I mean, that's what I'm guessing with the purple because a lot of the paranormal, paranormal romance with YA seems, seems to have like a blue and a green right now. So we're just going to keep looking. Okay. So it looks like we have the Greenwood Cove. All of these covers look great. They are very well branded together. And I'm just looking to see this one. I'm not sure what this one is. I do like it. It looks very interesting. Oh, it looks like it's like an anthology or something. Okay. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure if it fits with her brand. I'm going to be honest. I'm not sure if it fits with her brand, but that doesn't mean it won't. It's, it's hurting anything either. Um, so I just clicked all so I could see more of her books. So, so it looks like she has quite a few offerings here. Bear with me as I'm just checking things out. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually get into one of her books. So I'm going to go actually with book one, and I'm going to do a look inside. Uh, not look inside the actual book, but I'm actually just going to do a look here, and I'm going to look at the page. So she's in Amazon. Looks like she's in, oh, it looks like she's might be wide. She's not, a, this is not a KU title. Okay. Okay, so if it was me, I would add a little bit of bolding here and there because it does break up that space a little bit and it does draw the eyes. So if I, it was me, I would maybe say, um, maybe here, um, maybe make that bold and then maybe also have this be bold. And what that does is it forces the eye down of somebody who is on your landing page. It actually forces it down and it's a kind of a subconscious move, but and they see bold out of the peripheral of their vision, they see more bold. And it's, it's like, it's almost like it's instinct or something. It forces them to keep going. So if you have that broken up, this is really great white space. See how there's space here. It doesn't overwhelm you. Uh, if you have like ADHD or ADD and you get kind of overwhelmed with like blocks of, of text, this is actually really nice. This actually works really well because this is actually set, you know, giving people a little bit of space. But if you add in some italicized, maybe some bolding, like I said, the bolding is huge. If you add some bolding in here, that would really break up the blurb. So keep that in mind for the rest of the blurbs. Uh, this one says it's 180 pages, which is smart not to have it in KU because it's not super long, but to have it priced, it looks like it's a first in series free. So that's always cool. I'm a huge fan of first in series free for, especially for wide books. Um, Great, the reviews look great. 270 and at 4.3 stars. Same thing with, with book two is 4.6 out of five. So these all look really well done. And look at, I mean, these look really, really clearly branded. It's clear that they're all the same series. It's clear that they're uh, paranormal. It's clear that she has more of a YA bend. So that's great. Uh, I love that she came in here and she added more from the author. You know, product details, she's doing good and she's doing good free. I would probably guess that she's probably running some ads uh, because she is a little bit, her ranking does look pretty nice. Um, if, it, if you're not running ads to this, do a $5 a day traffic ad to any of your freebie sites, but have them go directly there. So provide like the actual links 
to them. So have them go to Amazon unless you have a direct store. If you have a direct store, always have your stuff go to your direct store. However, let's say that you're not, you're just a white author, so you have things on all the retailers, but you don't have an actual direct store yet. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make sure that your ad has the link, the main link to Amazon. And I use reader links. I always recommend reader links. It has the best linking system out there as well as reports and stuff. You'll see their link in our description. However, something to keep, a, keep in mind is you do the main link to Amazon and you do it in the main URL of the ads. But in the body of the ads, like the body of the text, the primary text, what you can do is you can do something like Nook and then do a specific link to the Nook product page. You can do Apple, same thing. You know, Make sure it's Apple and it doesn't say iBooks because a lot of people have made that shift now over to Apple. So you can do Apple Books, you can do iBooks if you want to, it's not a big deal, but you can put that there. You can do Nook, you can do Kobo, Google, anywhere where you're at, and you definitely wanna make sure your Amazon one's there as well. But then just make sure that everywhere it says, if you use graphics that have fonts, I don't like to use graphics that, graphics that have fonts on a usual basis, but I do use them because I like to always test. You never know when Facebook's gonna change their crazy mind about anything. So if we do that and you have those things in, in place, make sure that it says on your ads somewhere, get it your favorite retailer. Not necessarily at Amazon, not necessarily KU, right? We're saying get it at your favorite retailer. So that's a really great place for you to start. If you're already running them, this looks great. And I just would like to wonder, I'm just wondering what your read-through rate is. Now, if I just go with your with your reviews, uh, it's actually pretty good. Your read-through is pretty good based on reviews. But again, I don't know what that is because you might have a really strong ARC team, which if you do, awesome, awesome. You know, like there's certain things that um, that would actually be too big of a variables, too, too many variables for me to be able to say, oh yeah, you have really good read through based on your reviews. So that's one thing to kind of keep in mind. Um, it is first free and that's awesome. And I rarely see this high of reviews on a first and free. So your targeting and your branding must be on par. Okay, let's do a look inside on the first sections of the book, just because I like to see what people are doing. Um, this all looks beautiful. She's got a description in here. She has more by, and it looks like they're hyperlinked. Brilliant, hyperlinked, awesome. She has her table of contents, sneak preview. This is all, all great. You can actually check out another writer's writing style when you look inside their look, in, they, when you look inside their look inside sample. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, I think this looks great. I am a particularly, I'm the type of person who actually looks inside of the look inside before I buy a book. And whenever I see something that looks really strong, I get really, I'm, I'm encouraged. So this paperback looks nice. It looks like it's well formatted. Um, so those are great. I think that this is branded nicely. Like I said, I would adjust the blurbs. Uh, the covers look fine for this, especially for this genre. It looks like it's on par. Hopefully I know that the, what the branding is. I mean, hopefully I'm understanding what the, the genre is because if not, and I'm sitting here saying it looks fine and it's actually that you're writing like cozy mysteries or something, whoo, we are way off, off base. But I don't think I'm wrong in guessing and, and assuming what this is because your reviews are strong. So because your reviews are strong, it says that you are delivering a package and a product that is cohesive with the message. Um, sometimes that gets kind of weird to talk about. So go ahead and check out if you if anybody has a question, just check out what a spotlight is and with the sheet and then you'll be able to kind of answer this a little bit. Again, if you're also not sure what's going on, we have a like a book like is your book ready for marketing challenge. I, I recommend doing it. I just did this for about three of my books, I actually do the, I actually do the challenge. It's actually a process that I do for all of my books to make sure that they're ready. So if you get a chance, go check that out. I'm not necessarily saying Celia needs to because I'm doing her stuff right now. But if you yourself are watching this and you're like, hey, I want to do this, go check that out. Okay, so I checked this one out. I'm going to go back to the author page. And um, now I'm going to actually read the bio. So I'm gonna read the full bio here. And Love the logo. So your Roma lives in the Southern Appalachians. Oh my gosh, I've always wanted to be there. I like, ever since I saw the uh, Vampire Diaries, there was this part where they're like, Tyler the werewolf like got lost in the Appalachians with Haley. Anyways, it's stupid, stupid sidetrack, but there it is. Surrounded by generations of family and myth. Her stories are inspired by a natural interest in the paranormal and too many late night reruns of Supernatural, which is on my to, on my to be watch list. So thank you for that. So we can probably visit her website here too. So we can kind of check out what her brand is doing. I'm going to copy that for a little bit later. And then she also has a newsletter sign up. Great. This looks beautiful. Um, let's go back to her page all book and so it's sort of a popularity so the book one which that's excellent that book one is doing so well let's uh you know what we're gonna do 
Let's go in and we're going to look, search up Celia so I can see what her ranking uh, is looking like on the books. I have a cool little app that kind of shows me what ranking looks like. It takes a second to load because I am rural internet, y'all. So there we go. Okay, so this is book one in this one, and it is 99 cents. Um, okay, so these are 99 cents. I'm going to come back and look at this series and see why it's 99 cents. Um, I'm not a huge fan of pricing that low, especially for a completed series. Oh, $1.99. Oh, no, $4.99 before you. Okay, $3.99. Okay, so they're not priced at. I apparently have some kind of credits. So that was on me. These are priced just fine. $3.99, $3.99. Wow, I didn't know I had those credits in there. Okay, so $3.99, $4.99, perfect. $4.99, $3.99, $2.99. Okay. Box set, $7.99. Okay, you can see these, and okay, so here's something that really, and I'm going to do a video, we're going to do a video about this. This really gets in my craw, and I'll tell you why. Not what she's doing at all, but the fact that I have to take into account the difference in the ranking because they're wide books versus if they were in KU. So for instance, um, let's find book two in that series. So this one right here, it's ranking at 366, and I'm not sure what she's getting for sales because I don't have that type of information, but I'm going to tell you right now that that judging on the book one's free ranking and judging on the fact that this is a wide book, I guarantee her ranking if she was in KU would be significantly lower. It's probably more like in the 20s. Um, this is, and this is one thing that really frustrates me. And I will do another video on algorithms and we'll do another video. Like there's a lot of things that we can teach you with this. But ultimately, people say to me all the time, oh, well, these books aren't ranked very good. So I know they're not doing well. And it's like ranked by who, who are they ranking by? And what is your judgment of what's doing well and what's not doing well? I feel like this is actually doing well, one, considering it's wide, and two, considering the price point and the genre. Like this, I can see her doing well, especially with a really good, strong ad strategy and marketing strategy, because paranormal romances, urban fantasy romances, these are underserved in the wide marketplace. It is underserved. So I'm betting she's probably doing better wide than we than her rankings are showing here on Amazon. If you're not, Celia, let's let's have a discussion about why that might be and the things that you have in place for your marketing strategy. Okay, um, I am just gonna go in and look this one up and see. Okay, so this is an urban fantasy mystery. Okay, so maybe she's not writing paranormal romance. This one needs to be broken up here. I would put a, I would put a new paragraph right here and I would actually bold this sucker and then I would bold this one. Okay, I actually think this blurb sounds really good and I'm not a huge mystery fan and I'm sitting here going, mm, I might wanna buy that. Get a paper back up so it gives you a higher, page count but like a paperback page count the reviews on this are really good so yeah so i think that's what i need that i would do if it was me is i would definitely make sure and so this could go for mystery because it says mystery um you know it says it in here but I'm thinking that maybe what needs to be a little bit more clear is that there's a mystery like Greenwood Cove mystery, right? If that's a mystery, then it definitely needs to be a little bit more clear that it is. However, like I said, I see, I don't know if this is a mystery. I just, I really like the way it sounds. I can tell the voice is really strong. So yeah. Okay. So here's what I would recommend. I would recommend being really clear. Do you write urban fantasy mystery? Do you write paranormal mystery? Do you write paranormal romance? Do you write urban fantasy romance? That needs to be really clear because I'm looking at this thinking it was romance initially uh, because this is, you know, a lot of the similar cover style. However, now that I'm reading more into it, it looks like it's more like mystery and the covers still fit that. It's just, it might be better if you change, and this would be a really easy fix. You change the name of the series. So the series, and all you would add is Sunshine Walking Stick Series, or um, excuse me, Sunshine Walking Stick Mysteries. 
that's it. One simple change. You don't even have to put it on your covers, but that will help help you get into better metadata and it will help you as you know, cause you have it here, you know, you have private investigator mysteries, but people aren't, aren't seeing that. I wasn't when I first saw this. I mean, you just heard me go through that whole thing when it's about been about 13 minutes and I was sitting here talking about how it was a romance. So if you clarified that and just do a simple one in the series name, you don't have to change the title of the book. You don't have to change the, the anything on the series on the book, but you put sunshine walking stick mystery or a sunshine walking stick mystery. And then it will say book one because you have identified as book one. I think that will be a huge shift for you in identifying your brand a little bit stronger. This is actually your covers. Like I said, now that I see that it's mystery, I'm actually like really into this. Um, I would definitely make sure and say mysteries in your mysteries. Cause it says that you like uh, paranormal and too many late nights. I would hit up and say, Celia Roman writes paranormal or urban fantasy mysteries, like straight up, be really clear with it. Um, because that's more metadata, right? Like that's, telling people. Okay. Now I want to go and check out her website and see what's going on over here. So y'all just come with me. It'll be fun. Southern contemporary fantasy. Okay. So it doesn't say mystery, but look right out of the gate. It's a mystery, man. These are, this is a really pretty site. Okay. So I love the simplicity of it. Yeah, this is great. Books. See, it's clean, which is as a reader, I want clean. So this works really great. This looks just, this looks clean. But again, if you can, and it would be great if you could, is it'd be great if you like could identify that it's mysteries right out of the gate. And this does give a hint of mystery, but I think it would be really strong if you put in here Southern contemporary fantasy mystery, you know, like really, really push the mystery thing. Other than that, I just have to say that I think that this looks great. And I just, it's clean. I can tell that this pen name is done by someone who already knows what they're doing with books. Uh, the writing is strong. I can tell that the covers are to market. Um, yeah, there's a lot of good things happening with this. So uh, I don't even have any action steps besides make sure your blurbs are formatted so that you're making the eye, you're forcing the eye down. You have a really great use of white space, which is one of the biggest problems that I see. And you don't have that problem. That's great. Uh, I would also recommend, like I said, maybe making the fact that their mysteries a little bit stronger because you have, you're in a, and you were, I'm not saying cozy mysteries, but if you add that mystery element, like we just saw with Wednesday, they really just took Adam's family and mixed it with Nancy Drew. That's what the marriage was. That's all it was. And it was great. And so many people are looking for some kind of a mix like that. And it looks like that's what you're doing. Urban fantasy or paranormal, like mystery style. So really ramp that up and really make that apparent that people are looking at a mystery because the covers kind of suggest that, I mean, they're kind of in with that whole urban fantasy romance, paranormal romance thing right now, right? Where you see the girl, she looks magical and strong and all trendy. And she's also into shifters or she's going to be marrying the boy next door. You know, it's romance oriented. So if you make that just one little tweak, I bet that that will make a difference, especially with your metadata. Uh, but other than that, I don't have any, I don't have any other suggestions. I don't know what your newsletter looks like. I'm going to, I'm going to assume, and this is, I know we're not supposed to assume things because it makes an ass out of you and me, but I'm going to stake this, that I bet your newsletters are strong. Your branding is strong. You know what you're doing. Like I said, I think that's just that one little tweak and a couple little tweaks there and just make it a little bit more apparent what it is that you're doing. And I think you're going to do great. Again, I would not be targeting romance with your ads or anything. If you're doing any ads or anything to this, I would not be targeting that. Obviously I'd really be ramming at home with the paranormal mysteries, really go after that. And the urban fantasy mysteries, not necessarily cozy mysteries, like I said, because they have a different expectation, but the YA mysteries, that looks like that's where you're at. A nice, strong setting would be good for you. So go after that with your Facebook ads. Definitely ramp up the, the mystery portion of what your brand is. Uh, yeah, and uh, shoot me some of that sweet Southern tea, won't you? <laughs> so yeah, I, if you have any questions, email me. Um, I'm gonna actually reach out to you and make sure that we have a discussion about the action steps. This is going up on Thursday, so I won't have time to actually include your questions. But if anybody has any questions, please put it below and I will definitely answer your questions and make some comments. And if you get a chance, hit like and subscribe. I would love to uh, see you in the future and share this with a friend because one of my favorite things is um, that like me and Jamie, my friend Jamie 
Jamie Scott, Jamie Lee Scott, or Mandy that we do, or, you know, like Alina Johnson, my friends, we share links with each other. We're like, Hey, did you check this out? Hey, what did you think of this? I really want to see you guys doing that, sharing, sharing ideas with each other. Does that mean that I'm always right? No, I do not believe that I'm always right. I'm constantly trying to learn. And I don't like to uh, assume that I'm right because when I do that, I have actually shut down my capabilities for learning. So hopefully you're interested in learning and hopefully you're willing to listen to what I'm having to say and totally put me on like on spotlight. Say like, I don't agree with that, but maybe I agree with that. I don't agree with that. And maybe I agree with that. So um, let's have a great discussion. And just for an FYI, Mandy and I will be at Orlando Reads Books. Uh, we'll put the link in the description this August. And then we will also be at Nink. And I'm planning on being at 20 Books. So if you get a chance, come out and find us. Oh, and awesome, awesome, awesome. Inker's Con Digital is starting on the 22nd. I'm going to put the link again down below. If you use my link, you can get $50 off the digital ticket. I highly recommend going. I'm going to be doing a featured roundtable on there. It's going to be super fun. And I'm just, I'm really excited for the things that you can do with a community as strong as the author community. If you join us, I would love to see you. And again, I'm just super excited. So hit like, hit subscribe again, hit the little bell that notifies you when we get a new video up. And again, remember we have Monday marketing tips and tricks on Mondays, and we have some kind of a thing on Thursdays or something different every, every week. And uh, if you have questions and you want to join our free Facebook group, we'd love to see you in there. The link's in the description and all the things. <laughs> it's a lot. So anyways, reach out and let us know what you're up to. I can't wait to hear from you guys. Thanks.